we've been studying relativity. And one of the things we've been studying recently is the idea of four momentum. Four vectors in general in relativity combine time and space into one unified idea, one unified object, in the same way that ordinary vectors combine x, y, and z into a unified object. And the four momentum is a classic example, and a very useful example, of a four vector in relativity. So in the four momentum, as we've seen in class, uh, you can see the four momentum, I'm, ca I'm giving it a capital P, uh, label with a little serif to make it noticeable. The four momentum is four components. The top component can be interpreted as the energy. Technically it's energy divided by the speed of light c, but uh, in our class we've been treating the speed of light as the number one in the idea that we're measuring distances in seconds and times in seconds, something like that, to keeping things straightforward that way. So uh, whenever you see a c here, you can assume that's just being replaced with the number one, but I'm putting it in because it's kind of intuitive in uh, some of the four momentum places. So, all right, first component is E over C, or just the energy. Then the three components of relativistic momentum are the x, y, and z components. So that's time x, y, z for the four components of this four vector. That's not just momentum m of e, though. Uh, it turns out that the energy, the relativistic energy, is gamma times m, times c squared for energy, so gamma mc is e over c, and then for the other momentum components, gamma mv, gamma mvx, vy, vz, those are the components of momentum, and they combine to make the four momentum. One of the things that makes this a four vector is that the, com the combination of the time component squared minus the spatial components squared is invariant in any reference frame, in any coordinate system, any state of you know, uniform motion. So in particular, I can check that out. E squared, uh, and we, we can put that together. Energy squared minus px squared minus py squared minus pz squared equals a constant, the mass of the object squared. And you can check that out if you just plug in the definition of gamma and all that. You can prove this is right. We're going to use this fact in a few minutes to in an example. And the way you usually see this written down is total energy squared equals p squared plus m squared. And if we put that in, with, if we put in the factors of c, that's energy squared equals pc squared, that's energy of motion, plus mc squared squared. Hey, e equals mc squared. Rest energy is the mass energy mc squared of the object. So, okay, we're going to use these things that we've studied before in studying a particular example. I have a four momentum, and remember, uh, in our, in our frame, in our, in our uh, definitions, we're taking c equal to 1. Uh, so we're, our form momentum is measured in kilograms, just like mass and energy are also measured in kilograms in these special relativistic units. So I have a particular form momentum, just 29 kilograms, 11 kilograms, minus 8 kilograms, 16 kilograms as my four components. And I want to know, what is the velocity of this particle? Given this form momentum, can I figure out the velocity from that? Ordinary three-dimensional velocity. What's its speed? What's its mass? And what is its kinetic energy? The last one's the trickiest of them, but we'll go through and figure these out. So, how do I do these things? Well, step one, I can peer at these uh, components and say, if I want to find the x component of velocity, say, if I want to find vx, then I just compare these two things. vx is what I get when I divide the x component of my form momentum by the t component. That'll cancel out the gamma m, and I'll get vx. Technically, I get vx over c, the fraction of the speed of light, but for us, we're taking speed of light to be 1, so that's our vx. You can multiply by 3 times to the 8th meters per second if you really want to. So, okay, what do I get when I do this? Let's see. vx equals, okay, I want to do, uh, as I said, I want to take, uh, take the ratio. I want to take the x component divided by the t component, so that is px over Pt. Uh, plugging those in, my x component was 11 kilograms divided by 29 kilograms. Okay, 11 over 29. I can plug that into a calculator. I already did that. I get about 0.379. And again, ostensibly that's 0 0.379 times the speed of light, but our speed of light is one more unit. So okay, the x. I can do the same thing for the others. Py equals Py over Pt for the four momentum components, and that's minus 8 kilograms over 29 kilograms, which comes out to be roughly uh, 0 0.276 in the negative y direction. And 
same story. Vz is z component of four momentum divided by time component of four momentum, which is 16 kilograms over 29 kilograms, which is roughly uh, 0 0.552, 0 0.552. All right, again, going through all this, it's nice to see the units cancel out because my v's in special relativistic units are fractions of the speed of light one. I want a unitless answer. Uh, this is V over C in, in standard uh, SI units or something, but we've got all these answers. Okay, so I've got my velocity vector. I can, those, are, those are components of a vector. That's great. If I want to find the speed, speed V is just the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared plus Vz squared. Um, that square root, I, I, I can try to do it analytically. They're all the same denominator, uh, and it's squared, squared. So this is going to be 1... 29th, I know the kilograms cancel along the way, 1 29th times the square root of 11 squared plus minus 8 squared plus 16 squared, right? And the minus 8 squared is just positive 64. We can work all this out, but it turns out, uh, if you plug this in, it turns out that this is exactly 21 over 29. That sum, 11 squared plus 64 plus... 16 squared, which I should know off the top of my head, but don't. Is that Joel? Yeah, it's probably 256. So if you add those together, you get exactly 21 squared, 441. It's kind of cool that it works out that way. So we get this, and our, our final speed then is about 21 over 29 is roughly 0 0.724. So nearly three quarters of the speed of light at some funny angle. Great, so I've answered those two questions. What about the mass? How do I find the mass based on the four momentum? This is just taking four momentum information and finding out things about my system, specific things. Well, hey, I've got an equation here that tells me m squared. I can say that m squared equals total energy squared minus total momentum squared. Well, okay, that means that's 29 kilograms squared minus and that p squared is just px squared plus py squared plus pz squared. Well, hey, we just did 11 squared plus minus 8 squared plus 16 squared. We got 21 squared. So this is 29 minus 21 kilograms squared. And if you work that out, that is, let's see, 841 kilograms squared is 29 squared. And I subtract off 441 kilogram squared, that is 400 square kilograms. 400, I can do that one in my head. That means that my mass is 20 kilograms. So again, I, by some miracle, almost if I chose it this way, I've got a nice round number for my m, a nice, uh, nice integer for my m, but the point is I can find the mass by doing e squared minus p squared. That's my classic form momentum, energy momentum relationship in relativity applied to this case. So, and you can put in factors of c squared all you want. Um, you just multiply by c squared to go into standard SI units and find this in joules. If, I guess mass in kilograms is fine, but... Um, so finally, the last thing that I asked was kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy anyway? Kinetic energy is energy of motion. It's the energy you have by virtue of moving. And as we've seen before uh, in class or in reading, we've seen before that kinetic energy is total energy minus mass energy. I guess I could say E minus mc squared because mc squared is so recognizable. I want to put in that SI factor just to remind you of it energy minus mc squared, if I'm at rest, if I have no velocity, then I have no momentum, and my energy squared is just m squared, energy equals mass, if I'm at rest. So that is my rest energy, mc squared. E minus m is what I'm doing. Well, hey, I know those numbers. E is 29 kilograms, and my mass is 20, which gives me 9 kilograms. So this object moving nearly three quarters the speed of light that is 20 kilograms to start with, this 20 kilogram object moving close to three quarters of the speed of light ends up having an extra energy, energy of motion, of nine kilograms, which is roughly, uh, let's see, if I put that into joules, if I convert that to joules by multiplying by c squared, that is 
8.1 times 10 to the 17th joules. That's a lot of joules. It turns out that it costs a whole lot of energy to get even a small object moving that fast, moving close to the speed of light. So there we have it. We've learned a lot of things from just knowing the forward momentum of this object. Knowing the forward momentum was enough to figure out most of what you'd want to know. Forward momentum is a powerful concept, and we've done some stuff with it.